I don't have, like, any prop related to Sonic, Tails, or Mammoths. Um, here's a gift for Kirby that's definitely normal. Tails, the chosen hero nobody wanted. That's kind of rude. Boy, I sure hope this episode does not begin with Jocelyn making a joke about how the chosen one is Sonic, and then, oh wait, actually, no, it was Tails, surprise. It does? This episode does start with an extremely uncomfortable zoom-in on front-facing Jocelyn, as she says, the chosen one was Sonic the Hedgehog's sidekick. What did you think she was going to say? Frankly, Jocelyn, when I click on a video called Tails, the chosen one nobody wanted, and you lead into saying who the chosen one is, I thought you were going to have a very obvious and obnoxious bait and switch where you say Sonic and then actually guess what? It was actually Tails. Ha 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 That's exactly what you fucking did. Maybe I'm a prophet who can see the future, or maybe this show is just very unfunny and tells bad and obviously telegraphed jokes. I'm not sure which is more likely, but I did make a lot of accurate predictions about Death by related things this season, a few of which I should not even say publicly. I'm also not going to say whether or not I'm talking about the show you're currently watching or the show that I'm talking about. Also, this episode has a few too many scenes of Ford facing Jocelyn in that she's facing Ford in two scenes, which is indeed a few too many times. Pun. That doesn't actually make sense because she does it the third time. Psych. I got you. Ah, oh, this is going on too long. Once again, the editing is really solid. This episode using a lot of comic panels, and seeing as Death Battle editors have edited more comic panels in their lives than they will ever make contact with green organisms of the plant kingdom, naturally it all looks really, really good. They even got Titan Tails' ass fin to look natural on the comic panel, and that's just kind of really nice. I will say on that note, Tails rotating ass. Now that could have been a funny joke, but then you point out the very flaw in your own joke. How else would Tails rotate his tails? Let me tell you, a magic asshole does not explain it because tails don't come out of your bum. They are above the bum. It would be like having spinning snot and talking that up to a magic snout. Oh, then she brings it up again. Wonderful, that's so funny. At the very least, this is an episode I think warranted being done. Like it's something that actually deserved to be an episode of Desk and Death Battle. And I think it's done better than the Yoda one. She follows the plot and makes a few observations along the way that aren't altogether incompetently worded. Though not with the charm of, say, uh, the first episode of the show, which does this sort of premise but much funnier to me, because Jocelyn's reactions are way more entertaining in episode one. But like Jocelyn pointing out all the weird tales, it didn't make me laugh, but I can see how that would be potentially funny to someone. You know, it it's a joke. There is a joke here. I recognize it. It's not funny to me, but it's going to be funny to someone. Though I would not have included the Neo from the Matrix reference, I would have just had it edited like this. We've got Benjamin Franklin Tales, Brooklyn Hipster Tales, Care Bear Tales, and of course, my favorite, Public Flasher Tales. Which, you know, might still not be funny, but I think it's funnier, at least to me. I also like that Jocelyn criticized the original Tales dies and is never mentioned again, and then promptly never mentions the original Tales again. I don't know if it was an intentional joke that they did it like that, but I thought it was kind of amusing. I do wish her delivery was a bit different at a few places. Especially here, I feel it'd be better if it was like, I don't know. And then the original tale dies and is never mentioned again. So anyway, Zonic has no clue about anything because naturally it's not the job of someone who watches over the multiverse for important things to pay attention to the most important event in the multiverse. And thus he summons an army of tails, a great idea considering some of them can't even seem to tell where the fuck they're going and are making a beeline directly into scenic metal wall. Though Jocelyn also says that she doesn't think Cowboy's Tales are the tales of legend, as if a cowboy being special is less weird than a normal guy with nothing special being special. And also... Uh, wasn't his hand like the size of a galaxy earlier? I don't know, Jocelyn. I haven't read this comic. Let's just check back to what you said about this scene earlier to get an answer. And what better way to celebrate than by clutching an entire universe in your palm and... Clutching an entire universe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say his hand was not the size of a galaxy. Though Jocelyn's initial reaction to Titan Tales, sans her saying "swole" and the spinning asshole callback, is amusing. Just like her bewilderment. Yeah, I'd like it more if she didn't say "swole" and if she went harder into the reaction. But given the absolute Z tier start this season had in terms of jokes, I'll take what I can get. Better to encourage the. God, I'm realizing there's no way to word this without it sounding really condescending. This is funnier than previous episodes, and I think that should be encouraged. The ending is also at least... okay. Once again, it feels like Lisa needed to go harder into the exasperated and frustrated emotions for this to really hit. 
And also the joke about Tails coming back should have been hard cut, like... Creatine Tails departed to what could have only been a higher plane of existence. A changed being, forever divorced from the material world. A prophecy disguising a tragedy. He just shows up normal again on the next page. She also makes a joke about weirdly fetishistic art. Please don't say that because Archie Tails is eight years old and I'm willing to bet some degenerate has had something awakened in them when they saw you yourself with fox ears. That's right, I'm talking to you, Steven. But if all that's said and done, is this episode good? Eh, is it the best one of the season so far? Probably. Do I think this warranted being an episode? Definitely. And did I enjoy it? Hey, look, I have an eyebrow.